So after it earned a bunch of critical praise, and because I'm a huge supporter of our local Aussie film, I went out and saw Lion. And it was... I don't have a choice. What was she like? Beautiful. Yeah, it was alright, I guess. Lion fell into the classic trap that I think a lot of Oscar Beatty movies do, in that it trades telling a well-connected, cohesive story to kind of really get its message across. So we start in India with little five-year-old Saru, who lives in a small village with his mom and his brother. And one night he and his brother decide to go out and look for work, and they go to a nearby town, and Saru gets trapped on a train that uh, takes him 1,600 kilometers away, all the way to Calcutta. And once he gets there, he can't tell anyone he's lost or even where his home is because he speaks Hindi and most everyone in Calcutta speaks Bengali. So pretty much no one knows what the fuck he's saying when he says, help me, I want to go home. Remember that I am fluent in over six million forms of... What are you telling them? And this is where the movie's problems really begin because they spend a lot of time here in Calcutta showing Saru uh, pretty much getting almost raped by everyone he meets. This is literally a scene-by-scene -scene synopsis of what happened. I'm homeless and I just want a place to sleep. No, we are going to rape you. I've lost my mum, will you help me find her? No, we are going to rape you. I'm hungry, could you send me to an orphanage? No, we are going to rape you. Is there a nice white family that's going to adopt me? No, we are going to. Well, actually, that one is alright. Listen. I get that the movie is trying to raise awareness that being an orphaned child in India is terrible. I get it. But after seeing this movie, you're gonna get a poor Nana from Tamworth who's gonna be like, Oh my, Gladys, have you heard of Calcutta in India? Everyone there is a child rapist. Anyway, plot-wise, the movie spends so much time in India that by the time Saru gets to Australia, there's only about 45 minutes to an hour left for them to build uh, convincing relationships between Saru and his adopted mom and his adopted uh, dad and his adopted brother who's also a drug addict and also a girlfriend who shows up about halfway through who doesn't really do anything or encourage him to do anything, she's just kind of there. And you just don't get enough time with any of these characters to build a connection with them, even though Saru is apparently deeply tied to them. And that's true for all the characters except his adopted mom, who's played by Nicole Kidman. Uh, they nail it with, with her. Almost every scene she and uh, Dev Patel are in together is amazing. They're beautifully written. The performances have so much deep emotion. They reminded me a lot of those scenes in the first season of The Flash where Barry would be talking to his dad in jail and they'd be kind of having a heart to heart and I'd be sitting there like bawling my eyes out. I am in awe of the remarkable man that you are becoming. <laughs> All the things you've achieved and not just as The Flash, but you, Barry, your honesty, your heart. You are always a hero. <laughs> and I was bawling my eyes out here too. Dev Patel and Nicole Kidman nailed it. Uh, and the accompanying score as well is amazing. But overall, the movie as a whole is kind of bogged down by this goal of trying to raise awareness for, you know, how bad life in India can be for these orphans. And then you don't really get to build a connection with the characters as they move through the story. And so you, you kind of get this detached feeling through most of it. If you want to support your local Aussie film, then go out and see this movie. You'll definitely enjoy it and get something out of it. But it's not something you need to go and see. Uh, it's definitely worth waiting until it's maybe out on Netflix or on DVD. Also, can I just shout out David Wenham, who's like one of the greatest Aussie actors around, but he doesn't seem to be cast in anything big by Hollywood. Not sure why, because the dude's great. Faramir forever!